You know what I think, Dr. Research? What's that? I think it's time for a sequel to the strange case of the cosmic rays. It's been 50 years since 1957, and we've learned so much about cosmic rays. I think we even have a winning entry for the Edgars this year. Well, I bet you're right. Let's bring out your magic screen. Gentlemen, where have you been? It's been ages. Yes, it's been 50 years. It has indeed. Great to see you again, Mr. Poe, Mr. Dickens, Mr. Dostoevsky. And Boyd, we have a lot to tell you about. We have another entry for this year's Edgars. You're gonna love it. That? More about the cosmic rays? Do you say like? That's right. The Strange Case of the Cosmic Rays, part two. If you don't mind, gentlemen, Dr. Research and I will tell you all about what we've learned in the past 50 years. It's full of intrigue, mystery, science, research, and more mystery. Excellent. Do tell us. You've made us very curious. Let's start with a bit of an update to our dossier. I'm sure you gentlemen remember how we described cosmic rays before. We said they were like Fagin from Oliver Twist, and that we didn't know much about the Fagins, only about Fagin's henchmen, the particles we could detect when Fagin was slowed down by the atmosphere. Yes, the Fagin analogy was an excellent one. Of course, Fagin was an excellent character. Yes, Charles, the very best. Let's see the dossier. A good detective always starts with what he knows. We now know that about 90% of the space Fagins are just regular old protons. The rest of them are human nuclei. Nuclei of heavier atoms, and electrons. They're also just regular photons of various energies striking the atmosphere all the time. And the highest energy ones, X rays and gamma rays, have their own henchmen, just like the Fagans. We've also learned a lot about neutrinos that come from space. We also know something about their hideout, where they come from. We know that they come from neutron stars, supernovae, active galactic nuclei, and black holes. This is boring. Fill the mist, please. Don't worry, Dosty. There's still plenty of mystery. Tell them about the solar neutrino problem, Dr. Research. Well, gentlemen, when scientists first began to detect solar neutrinos, neutrinos coming from our very own Mr. Sun, they were looking for just one kind of neutrino, the electron neutrino. But no matter what kind of detector they used, nor no matter where it was, they only detected one-third to one-half of the number of electron neutrinos they thought they would. Ah, a simple yet effective plot device. The case of the missing electron neutrinos. This frustrated many scientists for years and years, but eventually they realized that the discrepancy could be explained if they changed one of their fundamental assumptions about neutrinos. Until then, everyone thought neutrinos were massless particles, but if neutrinos had mass, the problem would be solved. Excuse me, Dr. Research, whatever do you mean? The reasoning requires some knowledge of quantum mechanics. That's okay, Doctor. We've been studying hard since your last visit. Well, in that case, there are three flavors of neutrinos. Electron, muon, and tau. If neutrinos have mass, and if the flavor eigenstates and mass eigenstates don't match up, then the neutrino can oscillate between flavor states. Oh, of course. How fascinating. So you see, gentlemen, the mystery is solved. The electron neutrinos the scientists were trying to detect had oscillated into muon and tau neutrinos while they were moving through the atmosphere. This was confirmed by a host of experiments in the late 1990s and early 2000s. 
Geese I like. Indeed, truly remarkable. But I want more mystery. Never fear, Dosti. We've only scratched the surface. What do you say, Doctor? Should we tell them about the oh my god particle? Sure, but why don't you give them a bit of history first? Okay, well boys, back in 1965, two researchers at Bell Labs, Arno Penzies and Robert Wilson, were working on a microwave receiver for communications when they kept picking up background noise. They thought it was a problem with their instrument, but no matter what they did or what the direction they pointed, they still kept getting this annoying background signal. Hey Arno, why is this thing so loud? Aha, another mystery. In this case, unlike the missing electron neutrinos, they have found something unexpected. Very good. But this one was soon solved. Scientists discovered that these mysterious microwaves were coming from outer space, and that they were in fact leftover energy from the Big Bang. The big bang, 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 what was the energy, Dr. Research? About 6 times 10 to the 19th electron volts. It's called the GZK cutoff. Well, wait till you hear what happens next, boys! Vance! Vance! They found an oh my god particle! An oh my god particle? Oh my god! <gasps> oh my god! That's right. Scientists with the Akino Giant Air Shower Ray in Japan detected several cosmic ray events that were of ultra-high energy about the GZK cutoff. However, do they explain it? Well, they haven't yet. Not really. Ah, more mystery! The Auger collaboration has some evidence that these oh my god particles may be coming from nearby active galactic nuclei, which have supermassive black holes at their centers. These active galactic nuclei are close enough so there isn't enough time for the cosmic rays to lose energy by interacting with the cosmic microwave background. But the case is still open, gentlemen. We still don't really understand where these oh my god particles come from, nor do we understand how they are produced. Who knows what the next 50 years in cosmic ray science will bring. Very nice, and your ending has left you an opportunity for another sequel. Don't you agree, Charles Fyodor? Nice! This story was unfinished! Fyodor! It's a sensational tale of mystery and intrigue. They was only joking. They like it. In that case, shall we award them this year's Edgar? Yes, indeed. Da! I agree. Their tale is especially refreshing after all those trashy, commercial, unimaginative, non thought provoking mystery novels we've just looked over. Very well, gentlemen. Yet again, you have astounded us with a phenomenal tale of those mysterious particles, the Cosmic Rays. We hereby pronounce you the official winners of the 2007 Edgar Awards. Congratulations. Yeah.